I'm Nolan Bowerly, the Director of Research at Coindesk, and here's what a Bitcoin fork actually is. So you are here to help me understand what exactly a Bitcoin fork is. Um, so to think of these blockchains in a very simple way, we can see them as cryptographic keys that move memory. Uh, the rules by which the memory is moved are, are set, set by the miners themselves. So you've got miners that understand the rules, and when you want to change those rules, you need to fork it. All the miners need to agree uh, about the new rules, about what is a valid block in the chain. And it's just the majority of the miners that need to agree, right? You to got it. Change the rules. You, well, then you can have a fork where a certain minority believe that the truth and valid blocks are different. And that's where you get into this area of forks, which we saw this summer, where you had a group of miners decide that different rules should apply to a valid transaction. And so that not persists as a different blockchain. So uh, this, they, all the chains have the same history, and then there's two separate chains yep. that have moved forward and both are valid. Both are valid according to the miners working those chains. So those miners in Bitcoin Cash from the summer decided that blocks should be much bigger that every miner should be moving bigger blocks of memory. Um, Bitcoin now moves one megabyte per block. Um, and Bitcoin Cash? Did eight megabytes. Oh, they wow. Went, and, but that was already baked into the original paper when Bitcoin was first uh, announced by Satoshi Nakamoto. And he uh, had a road plan for how to go up to those uh, higher blocks. And was part of the road plan just to split off? No, there would be, so chaos and uh, the debate around it is a feature of the technology, not a bug. Uh, it was never shy that there would be debate about when this should happen because there is no one in control of this. There are groups of people and individuals that all have their own vision about how this should work. So the point was that there would be no one on top of this, a top-down structure that would lead uh, the chain towards uh, uh, whatever upgrades or changes that would be there. That it would be from a fulsome debate and that people would have disagreement and that's okay. Um, so there was never a, a desire to not have debate about this. It's okay that it's rigorous and fulsome and that everyone's uh, point gets through. So then it, if there's two sides of the debate, who gets to be the Bitcoin and who has to be the Bitcoin cash or gold or 2.0? And, and that's really where a lot of the emotions have come in. You can think of it a bit as uh, when you go to a diner and you ask for a Coke and they say, I'm sorry, it's a Pepsi, right? You, they're fighting over having that name. And uh, in the end, there are rules uh, that will help determine. So the most difficulty accumulated, the longest chain. And so help me understand, if I have a Bitcoin and a fork happens, what happens to me? You get both. I get both. You get both. And it depends how you're holding it, right? Uh, yes, it does. So, if I'm actually yes. holding it and I Correct. have a key and all of that, then I, I get both. So there are some exchanges who were uncomfortable uh, with the development work behind Bitcoin Gold, a, a, a fork that's in the process of happening. Um, and they said they weren't sure, they haven't seen the code, so they're not even recognizing that one. So in that case, if your keys were stored on an exchange uh, that doesn't recognize Bitcoin Gold, a third fork that we haven't mm -hmm. talked about, yeah. um, then you're out of luck. You mm -hmm. have to have those on your own. So wallet. what are they going to do with them? Because they're going to get them, right? Um, true, and there is quite a bit of debate about that. Uh, and that happened with Bitcoin Cash over the summer. So that just becomes uh, an issue of customer service and, and how much uh, customers are uh, fighting for what they believe to be their own property. And we saw that, and a lot of lessons were learned over the summer, because this is new, and there was nothing on the part of, uh, uh, of the people who didn't offer that for Bitcoin Cash mm -hmm. over the summer. Uh, but they learned, uh, a lot of these people learned lessons and said we have to do better mm -hmm. and, and provide better customer service, because they certainly heard it and, and got feedback saying oh, that this okay. was uh, not given to them yeah. and they were not happy. I got one of those emails. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if, if a Bitcoin splits and you have a Bitcoin and a Bitcoin, mm -hmm fork, let's say, because I don't want to use a specific one as an example, and my Bitcoin was worth $5,000 at the time, does the price of my Bitcoin now lessen in some of that value? Does this split in half? Are they both worth $2,500? One of the beauty, uh, beautiful parts around Bitcoin is that it is all from price discovery. Mm -hmm. uh, from the very beginning, it's been about price discovery, what someone is willing to spend to buy a Bitcoin, what someone is willing to take to sell a Bitcoin. Um, so in that case, uh, when, it, when it happened with Bitcoin uh, over the summer, uh, Bitcoin went along without barely noticing that Bitcoin Cash was created. 
um, others receive Bitcoin Cash and markets uh, were created around that price and there was price discovery globally immediately and it, it settled on a number. Mm -hmm. um, Bitcoin Gold is doing that right now where the value was a little higher uh, last week. It, it's kind of uh, uh, fallen in the past few days. So it's not worth quite as much. Um, and like I said, with the Bitfinex market, uh, we have a bit of an idea of what they're trading at currently before they're even issued, mm -hmm. before the forks even happened. That could change. That could change. And what does all of this mean for Bitcoin? It seems to be like the premier cryptocurrency right now that a lot of other things are built on. Mm -hmm. Does it matter? Does that, does, is there, is, a, is this a threat? All these forks a threat to Bitcoin? Uh, it's in some ways, Probably a good thing. Uh, think of store value and that usefulness of Bitcoin, that it, that it behaves like digital gold or as a store of value. Gold itself, to become what it is now, to be in all these bank vaults around the world, survived the end of the gold standard. It survived the end of coins, gold, being, gold mm -hmm. being used as coins. It survived the rise of paper money. So it fended off all of these other challengers, let's say, and is what it is today. So every day, uh, what we call the honey badger survives, every day that Bitcoin survives, it fulfills uh, more and more of this quality of being a store of value. So um, I, I don't think that's gonna go away. I think it strengthens Bitcoin. Uh, we have this idea of anti-fragility. So the more it survives, uh, the more reputable it becomes. And I think we're seeing that. So every time it doesn't get killed, it's made stronger. It always picks the longer, the better, the stronger chain with more people. You got it. You Great. got it. Yeah. Thank you so much, Nolan. My pleasure.